At first, we'll have the introduction first about uh, sure victory. Uh, John 10.10 10 says that Jesus came so that we can have life and have it abundantly. That God's plan is that we'll all live to the fullest. But it's a fact that not many Christians live their life to the fullest. And, uh, you know, so many Christians have, uh, for instance, many Christians follow God only half-heartedly. That in so many ways that we are occupied with the things of the world and not to think about God that much. Sometimes we don't think about God that much. You can sit down too and relax. It will take care of itself. And then sometimes we find that it's hard to overcome our sins. That it's hard to overcome anger, uh, frustration, negative thoughts, uh, negative feelings. And so many Christians find that it's hard to live according to God's way. And some Christians even think, well, it's not so such a big deal to commit some sins. So it's very often say, well, he has done this to me, so it's natural for me to do it back to him as what he has done to me. So it's very natural for people to say, uh, committing some sins is natural. But actually, every sin will give way to Satan. And every sin will take away some blessings of God. And some sins are more serious when we continue to commit those sins, and when those sins occupies, occupy our mind, control, take control of our life, or emotional. Many people are emotional. That they say, well, it's too hard not to be emotional. Too hard to have a peaceful mind all the time. Uh, that some people think it's impossible. Uh, for instance, when your bosses are not so nice, you say it's too hard to be peaceful all the time when I'm working for a boss who is emotional. Now some of your bosses might be emotional for no reason. Because they have some uh, something that bothers them that they cannot take care of. And so when you work for them, you say, well, see, our boss is being so emotional, suddenly happy, suddenly unhappy, it's hard for me to control my emotions. That we can learn not to be affected by them. And also family problems that uh, many Christians, they follow God, but they don't know how to take care of family problems. They're very nice in church. But when they go home, then there are arguments. Then uh, fights and uh, uh, verbal abuses. And they say, well, uh, my church is my refuge. <laughs> and the family, the home, is a place of suffering for some people. Or children problem that we follow God, but uh, it's hard to uh, help our children, help our children to follow God because uh, it's easy for them to follow the way of the world. How can we affect them? So this is part of abundant life or spiritual weaknesses that some Christians say it's too hard to have, you know, uh, to have strength all the time. It's very natural for many Christians to go up and down and. Uh, not to be strong all the time. We are strong not by ourselves, but by the strength of the Lord. We can all have strength, but it's a fact that many times Christians talk to me because I put uh, many video, uh, videos on, online. You can search youtube.com and then forward slash Pastor Yip. So at, in uh, YouTube, you just search Pastor Yip, P-A-S-T-O-R, YIP, and you can see many of my videos. Many of them are in Chinese, but some are English. And there are English sermons. And then also there are people who experience the Holy Spirit. That some of them are in English, some of them are Chinese, but then it doesn't matter because you can see the action. So you can go in and watch them. Also, God to uh, God to uh, same thing, you know. Instead of YouTube, it's G-O-D-T-U-B-E, GodTube.com. The same account name, Pastor Yip. You can see some videos there. Okay. And then uh, Galatians 6, 7 to 8, it says that, let's read. Whoever sows to please the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. So when we follow the flesh, when we follow the ways, you know, our sinful ways or our emotions, then what will happen is we'll reap destruction or reap suffering and pain 
and never make full use of our life. So many Christians, we can live to the fullest, but many Christians don't. And sure victory is a lifestyle that we can have victory for sure all the time. And in Chinese, I have a, a different name. I cannot find an English equivalent for that. Uh, in Chinese, uh, it's not sure victory. It's victory in a very easy, uh, light-hearted way. It's joyful and, uh, and it's, uh, it's, not, it's not unreachable. It's reachable. It's, uh, so in Chinese, uh, Hing Song. Do you know any of you know Chinese? Hing Song, Hing Hing Song Song. It's very. I have victory in a very Hing Song way, very easy way, relaxed way. Yeah, relax is a term for that. Relax, relaxed victory. But then in English it doesn't sound so good. Relaxed victory. People would say it's too relaxed. That in Chinese the term uh, doesn't mean too relaxed because you know in English relaxed means uh, uh, uh relaxed. <laughs> So it has a different meaning. Okay, and it has three parts. Let's read together. Live in the love and wonderful plan of God. And then D, take care of all problems in our life. C, live out the perfect plan of God. So that's, those are the three parts. And now we come to the first main part. A, live in the love and wonderful plan of God. And the first point experience and enjoy God's love all the time that we can live in the love of God and enjoy God's love all the time now we all know that God loves us right we all know that but do all Christians live under the love of God oh I'm so loved by God oh I enjoy living I enjoy my life I enjoy being me I enjoy God all the time are you like that all the time not many Christians are consciously living in the love of God. We know God's love, but that's on Sunday. We know God loves us. But when we go home, when we face the chores, when we face people, then people start to, oh, there's pain. Oh, it's Monday. Oh, day off is over. Oh, I have to go back to work, you know. <laughs> so a lot of times, a lot of Christians, even Christians, don't live in the love of God and, and they don't enjoy the love of God all the time and it's reachable it's reachable so today I'll talk about how to do it and how I do it I do it all the time now let me share with you first how God gave me this teaching sure victory oh can you turn off the music thank you <laughs> okay how this teaching uh, sure victory came to me it's uh, use later, not now. Okay. That uh, in 1998, I was filled with the Holy Spirit when an evangelist laid hand on me and I experienced great power of God and uh, great love of God filled my heart. I, I was so touched, I cried for a long time. I felt relief and freedom and uh, I felt the holiness of God and I, ex I, I sensed a feeling of heaven. Uh, and I smell a very different uh, sweet smell and it was uh, it was a life transforming experience and I said I never knew that I can experience God like that and I pray much every day and and later I found out when I pray or anytime I think of God the joy of the Lord will come to me anytime now hallelujah when I think of God the joy of the Lord will come to me uh, automatically and also when I pray for people, many people experience the love and the joy of the Lord. And I enjoy that very much. I said, wow, that's wonderful. I can experience Him all the time. And I can feel, experience His response right away. But one day, I call up someone on the phone and share my experience. And, but this person did not accept the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And she was very unhappy. And she said something unpleasant to me. And I tried to explain, but she could not accept. And then after I hang up the phone and I pray again, and I found that I could not have the joy when I pray again. And I said, well, I have to take care of this problem. So I called her up and I said, I'm sorry if I make you unhappy, uh, but I'm not sorry, I'm, I, I was not saying sorry for my experience. I was saying sorry if I make you unhappy, but she was still unhappy. 
And then after the phone call, I said, well, I've done my part. I'll forget about it. And then I just praised the Lord uh, uh, wholeheartedly and in a very free way. And I found that the joy came back to me. So I found that I have to take care of every negative emotion or how I'm affected by people so that I can experience His joy all the time. So that is how I started. Started to take care of any kind of problem, any kind of sin that come into my life. I started to take care of everything. And I found that the more I take care of my life, the more I can enjoy life. The more I have strength. So that's something that transformed my life. And then gradually I start to uh, preach it. And then I organize it into a 10 points teaching. Uh, show victory is a, a way of life. So that's how, how uh, I have that. And then this point here, experience and enjoy God's love all the time. I consciously, when I wake up, I'll praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I consciously uh, tell myself, God is loving me. God is blessing me. God wants to bless me. And God's love is right here. So I consciously tell myself, I can enjoy God right now. I can live in the love of God right now. That's how I live every day. And I pray as much as possible for the whole day, other than the time of concentrate prayer. Wherever I go, when I go to the restroom, when I'm on the way, I, uh, even when I'm preaching, I'm loving God at the same time, without words. If I preach and then I, I, I talk to God with words, then I cannot do two things at the same time. So I just, in a way, uh, how I do it is, I just like God. I like Him. And that's one way of prayer. Just, it's like uh, someone in love. The person might be doing other things, but he just like uh, the person he loves, right? He just like the person, and then he would have the connection. So now I like the Lord, and then I can experience His, his peace and His power on Him, on me, uh, all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 8.32, let's read together. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also to get along with him? This may give us all things. Now, this verse actually, many Bible verses tell us how great uh, is the love of God. This Bible verse tells us that he did not spare his own son. That his love, the Father's love for the Son is very, very strong. It's super strong, the relationship is very strong. There is great love between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But now the Father is willing to, to give His Son for us. Sometimes we think, well, that's something I've heard many, many times. You know, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. But it's something many Christians don't feel in the heart and say, this is such a great love. You think of something. Think of, you know, just someone giving up something for you. Uh, for instance, someone has something very important to do. Here's a job interview. Very important job. But you need the person right now. And a person is willing to give up his job interview for you. You say, wow, that person loves me very much. Now, if he gives up his house, <laughs> his house for you. <laughs> because you are in need, he sells his house. And then he gives the money to you to help you. Oh, what? You say, you gave up your house for me. We'll say, wow, this is wonderful. I mean, this is a great, great friend. Have you found a friend like that yet? <laughs> 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 to give up a house for you. But if someone gives up his life for you, Amen. you know, to save you, wow, you jump out and, and stand in front of a car that's going to hit you. You say, wow, this person is really, he really loves me. And you say, wow, I can never forget that love. I'll remember that love all the time. But now it's God himself. Almighty God, he came into the world and he died for our sins. And not only he died, but he gives us all things. Give us all things together with him. So the more I think of God, the more I like him. I appreciate him. I enjoy him totally. I've met many Christians who said, well, I cannot praise God. I cannot thank God all the time because I, I see many difficulties in my life. We all have difficulties. 
And many people say, well, because of this difficulty, I, I just think God doesn't really love me. I just think God loves someone else more. God's love is conditional. I'm not good enough, so I don't have the love of God. But actually, difficulties doesn't mean God doesn't love us. A lot of times people would connect how smooth things are with the love of God. Things are smooth, well, God loves me. Things are not smooth, God doesn't love me. Uh, sometimes people say, well, I have serious sickness. Well, God doesn't love me now. God has forsaken me. I don't know if you have thoughts like that. Oh, my marriage, a marriage. Uh, someone's marriage is, you know, in big problem. Oh, God has forgotten me. Oh. And then we, we link difficulties with, you know, that saying, God doesn't love me. But this is not true. Because since Adam said that with all people, there's difficulties. We all face difficulties. Difficulties doesn't mean God doesn't love us. And actually, in difficulties, we continue to hold on to God. God will pour blessings upon us. So the first thing is not to say that my difficulties uh, come be, uh, because of God uh, doesn't love me. It's not like that at all. So we say God loves me in spite of my difficulties. And God has a way. Mm -hmm. And behind every difficulty, God has a way to bless me. And there is blessing hidden behind every difficulty. So when you think of God, Jesus died for me, and He has, God has given me all things. He has graciously given me all things. But some people say, well, if He has given me all things, I will not be a household worker. Some people think like that. Everyone has a position. Whether you are, you know, household worker, or the president, uh, a CEO of a big company. Some people will say, well, a CEO has so much money, I don't have that much money. But God actually promises that when we follow Him, He'll give us everything we need and He will give us potential to make the best use of our life. When you follow God more and more and more, God will open ways for you to have more resource that you can use your life more. The most important thing in life is not how much money you have. Actually, the food you eat is not different from, it's not very different from a, a very, very rich man. I mean, he can still only eat so little. <laughs> he cannot eat all the time. Well, he might buy very expensive food, but is it all that different? He might wear clothes that cost thousands of dollars, but it's still the same function. <laughs> You might say, well, it looks better, but, but does it make a whole lot of difference? Make, looks better, just make some people envy. Actually, do people always envy? Not necessarily. So it really doesn't matter. So they have a big car, but we have a big bus. <laughs> well, is it so different? So, so uh, you know, that do they have really so much? So, is it the most important thing in life is about having more money, owning, owning more things? Not necessarily. But yeah. how our life can live to the fullest and have joy mm -hmm. and have strength. Mm -hmm. And actually, many rich people don't have the joy we have. Amen. Don't have the purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And if we follow God more and more and more, your life will be used to an extent. You bless people in such an extent you say, I'm happy to be me. Now, in a, at the end of the meeting, I'll, I'll lay, hand on, lay hands on you. And I have, you know, I have seen so many times, I've prayed for people. I've seen people transform, people heal, demons driven out. I have uh, one, uh, in my experience, one cancer patient. Uh, his, her cancer went away. And she said she had pain for over a month. And the doctor said she has cancer. And then she came to my meeting, and then she still had pain. And then, when I prayed for her, and then she experienced joy, and she was full, full of joy. And then after the, the prayer, she said, I have no more pain. And then uh, later, she uh, called me out on the internet. And then she told me, the doctor examined her, and there's no more cancer. 
And a few months later, one day she contacted me on the internet and, and I asked her, how are you now? And she said, no more cancer. So God is good and I see God using us if we follow God. And you too, you too, you can go out and, and pray for people and then people can experience the power of God, the healing of God, the freedom of God. And when you can do that, you say, wow, my life is worthwhile. And I also met someone who spent three hours a day waiting for the Lord on the average. Sometimes she wait for a longer time. And then it took, some, uh, it took a long time. Uh, maybe one or two years later, the Lord started to take, him, take her to visit heaven. And also uh, her visit to heaven has proof. Uh, what happened is she saw two Christians who passed away in heaven. I mean, who already passed away and went to heaven. And then these Christians told her something to pass on to the family members. So she, after the prayer, she went and told the family members. And the family members said, wow, you must have seen, seen them because what you said, you, don't, you didn't know before. So this uh, minister, this is a woman minister, can tell something that she didn't know before because she's saw this uh, two Christians. Actually, one of these Christians, when he passed away in the hospital, and she went there, and the moment she prayed, she saw this Christian between two angels. And then this Christian said to her, without words, she said in heaven, it's not with words, it's, it's thoughts pass uh, from the heart. And then the, uh, the, uh, what he wanted her to tell her daughter is, I'm very happy with your marriage. And so this minister told the, the daughter, and the daughter said, you must have seen her because I've uh, seen him, because this is how he talked. So he went to heaven and then, and then uh, they told her more things. And then uh, the third thing is about her family, that she, she saw that her ancestor had killed many people. So she, and then uh, God told her to repent for them ask for forgiveness and then she came back and asked her mother and her mother said your great-grandfather killed many people in the Japanese J uh, Japan Sino China war the Japanese and the Chinese war and he helped the Japanese and killed many Chinese and and this minister didn't know that so so I went to videotape her what I what was want to say is when people spend much time with God, praying to God, loving God, that you can go into a special realm. Actually, many people, you look up glory realm. People are in this kind of ministry. Some people are in this kind of ministry. And there is one person who is, uh, actually there are more than one, there are a few. There is one, uh, David Herzog. David Herzog, H-E-R-Z-O-G. David Herzog. And also Renny McLean, R E N N Y, and then M C L E A N. And these people, and uh, David Herzog, in his prayer, he led people to go to heaven. And sometimes in these meetings, he tell people, some of the people will go to heaven uh, after this meeting, and then it happened, and they verify that. So uh, we can have a much stronger contact with God. And of course, you know, our goal is not just to go to heaven, but to have a great connection with God and to be used by God. But what I want to say is, if we really live, live in the love of God, we can enjoy His love and our life will be transformed and we can, uh, we can do much greater things for God. Amen. And then your life will be, you know, that, uh, the realm of influence, the realm of uh, your life will be increased greatly. Uh, for this woman minister, that when she, uh, actually when she went to any place, she immediately sensed the spirit of, of the people around her. I've, I've gave her, given her names of some people, and she prayed, and then she would tell me things. And then I sent to the people, and these people were surprised what she said. And I've seen that right in front of me. Uh, there were two persons who led worship, and when she prayed for them. Immediately she said, 
God is really pleased with your, your how you lead worship. So that God told her things. So uh, we can have this very close relationship that God will graciously give us all things. Not necessarily money. God will give you money, but not just money. Some people always think of money when they go graciously giving us all things. He'll give us a great relationship with the Lord and ability to minister uh, by the power of God. That's a greater, greater blessing. So I hope you hunger for that and hunger for the love of God. But you might say, I'm so busy, oh, I'm working all the time. It's, uh, now it's time to pray. But actually when you're doing chores, you can pray. You know, you can do, be doing chores and then praise God all the time. But when you find time, I'm sure you must have some time of rest. But some people watch TV, but you can rest and then pray and wait for the Lord. And you find that God will uh, go into your life more and more. Okay, Zephaniah 317, let's read. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Now this is the second part of the Bible verse. Now this verse tells us that God has love that has sentiment, sentimental love toward us. It's not just love of the mind. A lot of people think of God's love is like, uh, you know, like a school principal, like a judge. God loves us. God loves us. He sees everyone. He takes care of everyone. Everyone. So think of a very serious kind of love. But here it talks about sentimental love. He takes great delight in us. That He really is happy with us. He'll quiet you with His love. That He'll, it's like a mother. He'll quiet you with His love. One time I went to a hospital and I saw a, a mother carrying a baby. The baby must be sick, so the mother has to take the baby to the hospital. And the baby was asleep. But the mother looked at the baby and smiled. And the baby did not have read any response. But she just kept smiling, looking at the baby. Very happy, very satisfied. And that's how God is. God is very happy with us. So when I pray, every time I pray, I say, Oh, Lord, you like me very much now. You are very happy that I come to you. A lot of times he will say, I have many sins, Lord, I have many sins. That's true. Then we'll ask God to forgive us. And then he'll forgive us right away. So don't stay in condemnation. Amen. Many Christians stay in condemnation and say, Oh, I have so many sins. God is not so happy with me. Then confess our sins and ask him to forgive you. That's so simple. Actually, you know, God gave me one thought one time. Because so many Christians said to me, I have so many sins. And... God, give me an idea. God would say to these people, you have many sins, so what? Everyone has sins. I haven't seen anyone without sins so far. So you just confess your sins. I'll be very happy with that. So God's idea is that you have sins, so what? Everyone has sins. It doesn't mean sin is not a problem. Sin is a problem, but we ask God to forgive us. Then it's fine. But also we... Ask God to help us to hate sins. Including worry. Worry is a sin, right? Some people say, well, worrying is not sin. But actually, when we worry, we're saying, God, you won't help me. Where is your help? That's worry. But when we say, Lord, you will help me. I have no problem. I can rejoice. Anytime when we're not glorifying God, our life is like someone lost. Oh, Oh, I'm unhappy. <laughs> then we are sinning. God's plan is that we'll all live like saints in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so anytime God's plan is that we're glorifying Him all the time. So God is loving us all the time. He quiet us with His love. And He'll rejoice over you with singing. Have you met someone who, when they see you, they sing, Oh, so happy to see you. Oh, so happy. <laughs> 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 
But God is like that. God is like that. He's so happy that He sings over us. Oh, hallelujah. He's singing over us right now. And when you pray to Him, He's so happy. Oh, when you look at this verse, it's very important. You remember John 3.16. So this is 3.17. And this is Zephaniah. Zephaniah, minor prophet. Zephaniah. Can you say it? Zephaniah. Say it. Say it. Zephaniah 3.17. Remember these verses. My favorite verse. Hallelujah. He'll take... Let's read together. He'll take great delight in you. He'll quiet you with his love. He'll rejoice over you with singing. Hallelujah. So when you think of that, oh, it's so wonderful. Okay, and then God's eternal blessing, ministry. Let's read Psalm 139, verse 5. You held me in behind and before, and you laid your hand upon me. You know, hem me in means he's really around us. You know, the hem of your clothes, you know, inner part. So that he's hemming in, in. He's in front of me and behind me. He's around me all the time. God is very busy, right? <laughs> Does God have to do that? God can choose to do it like this. Okay. Jesus has died for you. That's enough. Okay, I'll sit in heaven. I'll, I'll take a nap. One day you come to heaven and tell me whether you have been faithful or not. Now God can do that. Okay, you take care of yourself. You have the Bible. You can read it yourself. And you can pray, but I'm busy. God can do that. God doesn't have to serve everyone. And God can send angels to serve us. But God do not do that. He's around us all the time. So he's very busy, right? <laughs> Every single person. Now, let me ask you. Many of you are household workers. Do you serve your boss like that? Oh, boss, what do you want? What do you need? Oh, I, I'll follow you. Oh. <laughs> well, you might not have patience to do that all the time, right? When he is sick, you might do that. But, I mean, you say, I need a rest. But God doesn't stop. He just kept following us. But he is Almighty God. He's not a servant, right? He's doing what a servant's normal, I mean, the best, best servant does. Normal servants don't do that, right? But. God is serving like the best, best servant. That's unimaginable, right? So He ministers to us all the time. But you say, where's the proof? How do I know God is serving me? One way, when you pray, He doesn't, you know, it doesn't take time for Him to come to you, right? When you're in trouble, you find that He's helping you already. He's around us all the time. Especially when people really pray to Him all the time. You can experience Him all the time. So, when you think of that, you say, Lord, You're so wonderful. You've given me Your Son and given me all things. And you around me all the time. And you lay hand on me to bless me all the time. So we all have the blessings of God. And every time I pray, God is laying hand on me. Actually, I feel His presence in my heart and in my body. I experience Him all the time, and you too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I, I pray that you will all enjoy His love every day. Psalm 90, verse 14. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Now here it talks about a relationship of, with God, not just with the mind, in many people's heart, following God is like this. Okay, I obey God. I do this. I do that. A lot of times people think of just the mind and just action. But here it talks about that we are satisfied with this unfailing love. Satisfying means you enjoy that. You experience that. We all eat food every day. But do you enjoy it all the time? 
sometimes you forget to enjoy, right? <laughs> you think of the work after eating. I have to finish eating. <laughs> and then I have to go back to work. Yeah. But actually, when you eat it, you can enjoy it. Oh, it's God creating the food with love. Think of the food God has created. It's all beautiful, right? Delicious and good for our health. So when you look at that, you say, wow, God, everything you have created is so wonderful. So we don't just receive the blessings, but we receive with enjoyment. Enjoy the blessings of God. Oh, I can enjoy the food. So when you thank God for the food, you say, thank God that you have created the food with love. And I can enjoy your food and I can enjoy your love. Take a deep breath now and enjoy the breath. Do you find it enjoyable breathing in? It makes the body feel good, right? So this is also one way to enjoy. When you, I don't know if you uh, take a walk in nature sometimes, it's so beautiful. Enjoy that. Soak in the love of God. When you praise God, oh, soak in the love of God. And when you hear Christians sharing, or when you hear my, me preaching now, you soak in the love of God, oh, how much God touches me, the preacher also will touch you. You say, oh, I want the love of God in me like that, that I can enjoy His love all the time. Now, I, I kept telling myself to enjoy God's love all the time. Now, many Christians don't enjoy living. I mean, they, they live, they keep living. But many Christians wait for heaven. It's better to go to heaven than working so much every day. So we think of life as being difficult. But when we think of the love of God all the time, and experience His love all the time, then we're satisfied with His love. With His love. And then we can sing for joy and be glad all our days. Amen. So even when you're doing hard work, Every day, scrubbing the floor. Very difficult. But you say, Hallelujah! Oh, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him at the noon time. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise Him when the sun goes down. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, oh, oh hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Another gift of God, laughter. Amen. Have you noticed when you laugh, you usually cannot carry burdens at the same time. So Amen. let's try laughing now. Oh, <laughs> That's a great gift of God, right? Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so these are many ways that we can really appreciate and enjoy His love. And when you talk with Christians, you see how wonderful their lives are. How wonderful they are. And you say, oh, I take that love. I take that love of God going through them to me. And everything we experience, you look at the flowers and the plants, oh, so beautiful. Hallelujah. And you look at your body, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have my thumb. Because without your thumb, you cannot do anything. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can walk. Hallelujah. I can go to different places. I can see things with color. <laughs> Think of it. If we can only see black and whites. <laughs> And we can hear birds sing. Oh, yeah. it's so beautiful. And insects. Insect, the sound of insect is also very beautiful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, be satisfied with this unfailing love that we can sing for joy and be glad all our days. Hallelujah. Now, some people don't believe that God loves them because of difficulties in life. But difficulty doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. It's just because of Adam's sin, we all suffer in some way. And when we come close to the Lord, 
like this woman holding onto the cross. Uh, actually, it's not a woman, maybe a priest. But the idea is holding onto the cross. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. And you experience Him more and more. When I first started to minister years ago, actually 30 years ago, I, um, one co-worker always um, complained about me behind me. And when I heard that, oh, I have great pain in my heart. And I started to call upon the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, all the time. Even when I take a shower, oh, Jesus, Lord Jesus, set me free. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, I need you, I need you. So I have mercy upon me. So I started that prayer all the time, that when I suffer. When we suffer, then we call unto the Lord more. Amen. When we're in good times, sometimes we forget about God and, and just enjoy the good things. Okay, now, how to experience and enjoy God's love? Let's read point by point. Let's read together. One, enjoy God's love in nature. So when you look at beautiful nature, full of flowers everywhere, think of this. God gives you flowers. Has your husband or boyfriend given you flowers yet? Some of you have received them, but some of you haven't. But God gives you flowers in for Him, for Him. <laughs> so when you look at the flowers, so beautiful. Actually the flowers in nature is more beautiful than the flowers in the vase, right? They're more lively. And you say, God, you're so wonderful. God doesn't have to make flowers, right? And you notice that pictures of nature is not as beautiful as nature itself. Have you noticed that? The flowers, when you look at it, the real flowers compared to pictures of flowers, the pictures of uh, uh, flowers are more dead, right? The flower, you, you don't see the, uh, the, what do you call that? It, you, you see the, the, pet, the petals of the flowers, like in a way is glowing with color, and also it's uh, semi-transparent. That also you look at your, your, your hand, your flesh, your face, and you look at pictures, they're different. Yeah. Have you noticed that? You, you try to pay attention to that. And, and you say, wow, God is so wonderful. And when you drink water, thank God, I can enjoy water. Yeah. So everything we see in nature, enjoy. And the food, try to taste it. A lot of people eat and they taste soy sauce. A lot of soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay too. But, the natural taste is the best for me. The natural taste. But some people say that's not strong enough because they're used to soy sauce, doesn't it? <laughs> Have more and more soy sauce. But actually when you taste the natural taste, you pay attention to it. It's, it's good taste, so enjoy. Second, number two, read, read it. Meditate on God's love revealed in the Bible. Just like those verses that are show you just now. There are many, many more verses about the love of God, Amen. about the Father <clears throat> hugging, kissing the prodigal son coming back to express God's love. God is waiting for us. Now, some of us might be prodigal son in a sense that we don't have a close relationship with God. And God is waiting. And when you come back to Him, God is kissing you all over you. He is very happy. So think of God as from the Bible, as revealed in the Bible. But some people say real life and the Bible are different. Real life, I face many difficulties. But let me tell you, the more we follow God, the more you experience the love of God. Amen. The more you enjoy life. And you find God's blessing pour upon you in many, many ways. Let me share with you. I grew up in a family of gambling. There was much gambling in my family that I ate uh, rice with mold. Oh. Mm -hmm. That was green and bread. You don't see that rice anymore. Yeah. But in Hong Kong, they used to sell rice like that. Oh. That has mold on top of it, and then you have to go home and wash it away and then cook it. Oh. I ate rice with mold. I 
a soy sauce on rice, many meals. That's how I grew up. My family, you know, sometimes I found that some of my clothing were gone because they took it to, um, what do you call that, um, to the place to get money. What do you call that? So my watch disappeared, my clothes disappeared. When I look for it, it happened to me a number of times. And my piggy jar <laughs> was empty. That happened to me. And I grew up in such a family. But God, after I became a Christian, God poured blessings upon me. And someone offered to give me education. Uh, and then help me in the first year and after that I continue to take care of myself and I have one bachelor degree and two uh, uh, master degree wow. in theology and God gave me my family would never be able to do that uh, but it's from God Amen. and God will give you blessings Amen. but you say there's so many years I'm still in difficulty but don't worry, God will not delay and God will one day will give you blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So meditate on God's love revealed in the Bible. Three, believe in God's love and Jesus' redemption. So every time think of how Jesus died for me, praise God. Jesus didn't have to die for me. And Jesus died for me, you know, it's not just a physical pain, but he has to face the condemnation the curse of God in Galatians to talk about that. The yeah. curse of God was upon Jesus. That he took uh, the curse and all sin and became sin. Second Corinthians. Talk about that he became sin. Not only did he carry his, our sins, but he became sin. And Galatians talk about he became curse yeah. for us. It's a great, great love for us. That we say, Lord Jesus, your love is very real. And that's four. Enjoy God's love in close relationship with Him. That you, we can all experience His love and peace. And when I lay hand on you, or before you have experienced the love of God, when I lay hand on you, don't think, don't just think. Some people just keep thinking, Will I fall? Why don't I fall? Um, what will happen if I fall? I mean, the main thing is not about falling. The main thing is. How you experience God's peace, yeah. His power coming into you, His love coming unto you, His freedom coming into you. Amen. So when you, when I lay hands on you, just enjoy. Yeah. Let the love of God come into you. The peace of God come into you and enjoy that. And then when you keep that, when you go home, every time you pray, yes. you can experience Him. Yeah. The closer you are to God, the easier it is for us to, to, uh, to come close to Him. To have relationship with him, I find that now compared to the, in the past, every time when I think of God, immediately I can experience Him. So it's very easy. So there is no period in my life now that I feel dry. I don't feel dry anymore. I feel I don't feel weak anymore. Any time I need strength, I just oh Jesus, Hallelujah, and I'm filled with joy and the strength of the Lord. So that is a precious gift. But some people are not like that. They say, oh God, where are you? Oh, you're so far away. Oh, I pray and there's no result. And people sometimes, they always look for result in answering of the prayer. Oh, money don't come yet. Oh, my sickness is still here. And then they think of the difficulties. We first look at how we experience God. And God's help will come in time. And we have not starved yet. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, they say, my difficulties are too great. Let me tell you, share with you. I've been, you know, some time people gave me hard time, <laughs> said things unpleasant to me. And I was bothered by that. And then one day, God gave me this thought. Because I, I dedicated my life to God and I said, I'm not afraid of persecution. If one day I'm put in jail because of Jesus, one day when people beat me up or even kill me, I don't, I'm not afraid. I've said that to the Lord. And then God gave me this idea. Okay, when well, these people said unpleasant things to me or yell at me, is it as bad as persecution? No. 
I mean, persecution, they'll beat you up. They'll force you to say things you don't want to say. They will uh, give you a hard time. They will starve you. I have not been starved by anyone yet. <laughs> I mean, they just said something, and then I was bothered by that. But compared to real persecution, it's not really a big suffering. So I said, well, that's nothing. <laughs> that way, I can, you know, neglect the negative words of some people. And I can say, I don't have to be bothered by them. And I can experience God's love and help all the time. And, and so I don't look at the suffering. I just look at God and I, I pray to God all the time. And I, I can experience His love all the time. Now, for some of you, if you say it's so difficult for me to experience His presence, you tell me, okay, uh, uh, when I pray for you in a moment, for those who find it very difficult, I'll pray for you first and I'll help you to, uh, uh, to be sensitive to the presence of God. And then you keep that. But I'll pray for everyone who wants me to pray for you. Okay, number five. Experience God's love in daily help from God. Have you experienced help from God? Answer of, of your prayer in your life. Have you experienced that? So remember that. I remember everything God has done for me. There were three times I almost had a car accident that I, all three times I could have been killed. One time I was on the freeway and I didn't know there was ice because it was in the night time. There was very little ice, no ice anywhere, just a little bit on the road. And I was on this freeway and then suddenly the car spin. And it spin part of past the next lane and spin to the middle, uh, you know, then I would I'd stop and then immediately a big truck passed by. If I had spin one split second later, I would be in heaven already. And then at that time, I thought a car was hitting me head on because I was trying to pass the car. And then the, when I passed the car, the car sped up. So I could not pass. And then I didn't have time. And then the car was coming. I said, Lord Jesus, I'm coming now. <laughs> <laughs> there was no time. And then in the last moment, actually it was just a two lane road and then one lane going, one lane coming. I was passing the car. And then at that moment, the car suddenly Swerve to the side because there was a place that the car can go off a little bit, and then thank God I'm still alive. <laughs> and then I remember every time, I remember all the time. I said, My life now is a gift from God. Amen. And one time I closed the garage door, it was a mistake because the uh, electric part is broken. I pull, what do you call that, you know, the, the, when the garage door folds, there's a gap. And I pull the gap, I think I can pull out my finger very quickly. But it caught me in no time. And I felt pain for a few months after that. Immediately I stopped it. And I said, if the strength had been a little stronger, I would have no fingers here. <laughs> Thank God for these three fingers still here. That I can still play the piano. So I remember all these things God you've given it to me. Do you remember God's work in your life? And say God that's God's love. I was bitten by a little mouse when I was about 10 years old. I didn't see the mouse but I heard the sound I think it's a mouse not a rat. It was very dark. And I was walking by a place with, uh, you know, garbage. And then I was wearing a uh, slipper. And then I stepped on something and then immediately I felt something bit me. And I touched it, there was blood. And I heard the sound was from a mouse. So I could, you know, I didn't do anything. I could have died before I knew Jesus already. So every of these experiences I remember. I say, Lord, you're so wonderful. Can we remember God's love and respond? Can you imagine two persons? Okay, for instance, most of the time, you know, I find that uh, women 
love men more than men love women. That's a fact, you know. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, two persons supposedly in love, and the woman really take care of the man and do good things, and the man has no response. You say, wow, this man has no response. See how much the woman is taking care of him, and the man has no response. But very often we are like that. Mm -hmm. God pours His love in so many ways, yeah. but our response is just so little. Mm. We should be overwhelmed with love and say, oh God, you love me so much. And then we can enjoy that, and then our Christian life will be different. Do you think you can put this in life, in your life, that really live in the love of God, enjoy His love all the time? Is it very difficult? Is it very difficult? No, it's not very difficult. It's just because we're not consciously loving God and responding to His love, right? We just don't think of it. It's like a child, the mother loving the child all the time and the child doesn't respond. Have you seen that happen? that they just think, take it for granted. Yeah. And we take it for granted. But if we appreciate God's love, our life will be full of blessings. And, and you enjoy life much more. Do you want to enjoy life much more? Amen. We can enjoy life much more. So I hope that you put this in your mind. I want to enjoy God's love all the time. Okay. Can you tell the, next, the person next to you? We want to enjoy God's love all the time. One level is knowing God's love. Knowing God's love. Believing God's love. Next level is experiencing God's love. People, some people stop there. Another level, enjoying God's love. Not just experience. Some people experience in prayer, oh, so good. Experience. But they don't go into the level of enjoying. And then appreciating God's love. And say, wow. You're so wonderful. I appreciate you. I like you. I love you. And responding to God's love. Can we do that? Responding to God's love. And I hope that you remember this teaching. This teaching is deep in my heart. So I remember every day. Every day I remind myself to enjoy God's love. To respond to God's love. To live in His love. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we can rejoice every day. Rejoice and enjoy His love every day. Enjoy. Oh, hallelujah. Can you start to do that now? Oh, I enjoy God's love now. Hallelujah. Do you find peace coming into you when you say, Oh, I enjoy God's love. Do you find peace coming into you? Oh, hallelujah. It's such a great blessing, right? People have to pay a few thousand dollars and go for trips to have fun. But actually, they don't have fun sometimes. They just complain. <laughs> but we can just... We don't have to pay any money. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, I love you. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus, can you do it? Can you do it like that? Oh, all the time. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, so wonderful.